All right. Very good morning to our respectable speaker and distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, we would like to remind you to mute your microphone. Thank you. Besides, please do not forget to sign in your attendance. The Google Form link has been posted on the Zoom chat box. We will close the registration link after 15 minutes the webinar starts. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. Today, Yuta is honored to have Mr. Alan Guest Warren with us. Let me introduce the background of him. Mr. Allen is a planning and capital allocation executive in group finance of Tanaka National Brahat PNB with almost three years of work experience. He has assisted and empowered fresh graduates, especially from accounting, finance, and economics background by sharing contents pertaining to basic work ethics and procedures in LinkedIn and accommodating the aspiring young talents by conducting free webinars. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let us start off the session by welcoming the speaker of the day, Mr. Allen. Good morning. Okay, so can you hear me? If you can hear me, maybe the audience, perhaps you can just type number one in the chat box if you can hear me. Okay, I see some of you are typing number one. All right, that's good. So if you can see the screen, perhaps you can just type number two. Okay, right now I'm sharing the screen of our point slides. So if you can see this, maybe you can type number two. Okay, that's good. Of course, today's agenda is financial modeling. Of course, I'll be teaching you on this Excel part, Microsoft Excel. But of course, I need to give you an understanding first. What is financial modeling? Why do some finance, corporate finance, project finance, or even investment analysts use financial modeling? Okay. All right, so let me go to the next slide so that you can get an understanding, okay? All right, so since this is a recorded session, you can get this, okay? And also perhaps you can screenshot or even you can jot down if you want to. All right, so what is financial modeling? Financial modeling basically is an Excel template that is built to forecast data, okay? So basically all the analysts, all the executives, what they do is they will use Microsoft Excel and they will build a template in that Microsoft Excel to forecast the data, okay? And then what's the purpose of using, what's the purpose of having this financial model? Basically for project finance, for merger and acquisition, if you just say a company A, they want to acquire company B. So of course they perform financial modeling and also for equities research, okay? Okay, maybe you can ignore the spelling mistake, but it's equity research. And then who will use this financial model? All right, financial model, it is used by big four audit firms or big four accounting firms. There are also some accounting firms that use financial model and also investment banks project and corporate finance. And what you need to build financial model, basically you need to have a strong understanding on accounting and finance. So in today's session, I'll just give you a brief, okay, a brief on accounting and finance. And if you have some basic knowledge in Microsoft Excel, that will be useful for you in order to build financial model. And you need to have a strong understanding on what's the operation of the company. Okay, this is quite important. Of course, maybe I need to highlight this. Okay, understanding the company. Because companies operate in different industries. There are oil and gas company, construction companies, even hotel industries, and also utility industries. Okay, so having this understanding is quite essential. And how it works is input, process, output. Okay, I'll teach you later what is the input, process, output. So basically, this is what financial modeling is all about. All right. Okay, since most of us are from, from Malaysia, okay, so in Malaysia, we have highway from Bukit Kayu Hitam to Johor Bahru. Okay. So in order to construct this highway, of course, the companies, they either need to raise capital either from the investors or from the bank. Okay. But before they decide to construct this highway, they need to have an assumption how much profit they are making or what is the cost of the construction? What is the cost of the operation? Because you cannot simply build a highway without knowing what's the construction cost. Okay, so of course, every company, whether they are building a highway or building a twin tower or building any buildings, constructing any malls or shopping complex, they need to have an understand, uh, understanding on what's the assumption of the construction costs. Okay, all right. So also, if you notice in this slide over here, maybe you can type number three if you can see this uh, particular slide. Okay, so in this slide, if you notice, it is prepared by Maybank. Okay, this is what they call as equity research. So in this statement over here, you notice there's financial year 18. Okay, maybe I need to highlight this so that you can see clearly. Okay, so you have financial year 18 or in accounting, we use financial year. 
but basically this is calendar year 18. So A means actual, okay? E means estimate. That means it is estimated cost. This is the actual cost. So all these elements over here, it's actually constructed or built from financial model, okay? So all these works. And then similarly, like what I told you earlier, if a company acquire another company, for example, in this case, uh, American company, Walt Disney, they acquire Marvel Entertainment. Okay, so when they acquire, they cannot simply acquire just like that. Of course, there will be a lot of paperwork. There will be a lot of legal discussion. But prior to that, there will be a preparation of financial modeling. That means if just say company A acquire company B, so they need to have an understanding. What is the debts? What is the share capital and so on, right? Okay, so for today's agenda or today's session, I'll be using a case study based on a hotel company. Okay, so hotel company, of course, first and foremost, you need to construct hotel first. And then only the hotel can go to operation phase. Okay, that's how in the operation phase only they can generate revenue. Okay, so this is our today's agenda. I'll be teaching you on how we build a financial model based on a hotel. Okay, all right. So of course, hotel in the financial model, we will under we will consider the planning phase, construction phase, and also the operation phase. All right. So this is how it looks. All right. So this is basically the understanding on how financial model is. Okay, so now maybe I can go to another slide first just to give you an understanding. Okay, so if you can see this PDF file, perhaps you can just type number four. Okay, if you can see this PDF file, maybe you can type number four. All right. So of course, in this PDF file, if you notice, there is a, it's a statement of a football club, Manchester United. But if you can see the table over here, we have scenario one, scenario two, so all this data or all this information are extracted from financial model, okay? Are uh, extracted from the Microsoft Excel. Similarly, if just say I want to go to this sheet over here, okay? So can you see this over here in this table, in this PDF file? If you can see this, maybe you can type number five, if you can see this. So in this PDF file, okay? If you notice, there's a table, financial year 18, financial year 19. So this table, all these elements over here is actually from the financial model, okay? All these items over here, sales, earning before interest and tax, okay, then profit. All these items are actually accounting uh, items, okay? So in today's case study, I'll be teaching you on financial model, okay, based on a hotel company, all right? So maybe I need to zoom out so that you can see clearly, okay? So basically, we have a hotel company which is currently under a planning phase, okay? So in under the planning phase, they decided that this hotel company will undergo construction and then eventually will go to an operation phase, okay? But before that, can you see this Excel file? Maybe you can type number six if you can see this Excel file. Okay, that's good. I see some of you are typing number six, okay? Because I will always ask you to type any numbers because to ensure that uh, we, have, we are on the same page because sometimes due to the internet connection, we might have a miscommunication and so on. So, all right. So in today's agenda is based on a hotel company, all right? So of course, in this case over here, we assume that the construction period, the construction period will be about four to 12 months. Okay, if you can see clearly, the construction period is about four to 12 months. Why four to 12 months? Because currently we are facing the crisis of COVID-19 pandemic, okay? Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, of course, there's an implementation of Movement Control Order, MCO, okay, maybe phase one, phase two, or anything. So it's due to the COVID and due to the MCO, some of the construction has to be delayed, has to be prolonged, okay? If just say there's no COVID, okay, there's no COVID-19, no MCO, the construction can happen within four months. But however, if just say there's MCO, so the construction can be extended into 12 months. So basically, this is just a prediction, an assumption, okay? And same thing goes to the construction cost. So, of course, when you construct a building, okay, if you see over here, there's a building over here. So, to construct a building, of course, there's an engineering cost, there's a development cost, there's some license. You cannot simply con uh, construct a building. You need some license, some permit to conduct a building. And similarly, you need some insurance, okay, if there's any risk happens, okay. But there's actually more than that. But in today's case study, this is based on a fictional company, company ABC. So, the assumption is this is the engineering cost. This is the development cost, and on, this is the license and project insurance, okay? And of course, in this company, since it's fictional, 
since it's company ABC. So the initial investment, we just put 10 million. Okay. In normal case, sometimes company, they will issue loan, they will issue bond debt, or sometimes they will raise capital to finance their project. But since this is a, a fictional company, we are using initial investment. All right. Okay. So what, what is the flow of creating a financial model? First step is you need to have an input. Okay. So this is an input whereby if just say I create a normal case, it will go to a normal case scenario. If just say I create worst case. Okay. Since right now we have the pandemic, of course, although we can travel interstate, but the cases are still there. We have a new thing called Omnicron. So if worst case, the construction can be 10 months or even up to 12 months. Okay. So don't worry. I'll teach you this. But now I'm just giving you some glance, some gist of it. All right. So you can look at the base case. So we can, we can predict the data according to the scenario. Okay. And then there's a process. Okay. This process is basically a transition from the input to the output. And output is the final statement. Okay. The last report that you will be prepared. Okay. All right. So now I'll be teaching you how it works. So it starts with input, process, output. Okay. All right. So this is our case study. So now I'll begin. Okay. So now I'll name this sheet as assumption. Okay. You can call it as input sheet. In some cases, they call it as assumption because we are building a hotel. Okay. This is a based on a fictional study. Our case study today is we are building a hotel. So we are not sure this hotel can be based on best case scenario or normal case scenario. We are not so sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. Okay. Okay. And I just copy this. All right. You can put it over here. Okay. So we have like what I told you, we have best case. Maybe I just copy. Okay. All right. Are you with me? If you are with me, maybe you can type number seven if you are with me. Okay. I see some of you are typing number seven. Okay. So I won't make it boring. I'll make it as fun as possible. So if you look at this, we have three different scenarios. When you construct a building, there will be sometimes more than five different scenarios because we are just predicting. So in this case, like what I told you, the initial investment is, if you look at this thing over here, it is 10 million. Okay. The initial investment is 10 million. Of course, you may ask me, Ellen, in normal, uh, you know, in the corporate world, what figures they will use? Okay. This one, normally they will discuss with the engineering team. So in the engineers will do the site visit. They will visit the construction site and they'll give these figures to the accountants, to the finance executive and the finance executive, they will base this data. But since this is a fictional, we just use this data over here. Okay. All right. So the initial investment is 10 million. So I'm going to put this as 10 million. Okay. And I'm going to press F4 so that it will be locked. Okay. So this is 10 million. Okay. I'm going to change this to accounting format and there you go. All right. So control R. Okay. So construction period. Okay, like what if you see over here, 4 to 12 months. The construction period is about 4 to 12 months. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put here 4. If just say a best case, just say no COVID, no coronavirus, no MCO, the building can be constructed within 4 months. In normal case, maybe I just put 7 months. It's up to you. You can decide since this is a fictional case. And the worst case is it can be 12 or more than that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to the developer tab. Okay, can you see this developer tab over here? If you can see this developer ribbon, maybe you can type number eight. Okay, so this is a developer ribbon. Okay, so I believe that when you open your Microsoft Excel, you will notice you might not have this developer ribbon. Okay, so what is this developer ribbon is? Okay, how to get this developer ribbon? What you do is, maybe you can jot down if you want to. You go to file. Okay, you click options. A window will pop out and then you go to customize ribbon and lastly you just tick the developer tab so if you want to jot down you can jot down or you want to screenshot you can screenshot okay so can you see the file over here maybe you can click number one if you can see the file okay so the first step is you go to the file okay this is the file over here and then you go to options Okay, so can you see the options? Maybe you can type number two if you can see options over here. Okay, 
So this is an options. Okay, you click at the options. So once you click the options, a window will pop up. Okay, can you see this window? Maybe you can type number three if you can see this window. Okay, there's a big window over here. All right. And then after that, over here, there is customized ribbon. Okay, can you see this customized ribbon? Maybe you can type number four if you can see customized ribbon. Okay, so this is customized ribbon. So what you do is you tick the developer um, item over here. So you just tick this and you press OK. So some of you might ask me, Alan, is this free of charge or do I need to pay anything? Okay, basically your Microsoft Excel have all these elements. Okay, it's free of charge. You don't have to pay any cent, any single cent. So you just tick this developer item and you press OK. All right. So then that's how you have this developer ribbon over here. Okay, so if you want to know how, you go to file, you click options, a window will pop out, you click customize ribbon, and then you tick the developer. All right, so if you want to jot down, you can jot down. You want to screenshot, you can screenshot. This is how I have the developer. All right, you can type number five if you can see spin button. Okay, maybe you can type number five, you can see the spin button over here. It's under insert spin button. Okay, so in this spin button, what I do, I will click this and I will draw an item over here. Okay, so this is a spin button. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press right click. Okay, let me put this first. Number one is right click. Number two is format control. Number three is you can amend the data accordingly. Okay. So first, you right click. Okay, can you see format control? Maybe you can type number six if you can see format control. Format control. All right, that's good. So once you click format control, a window will pop up. Can you see this window, format control? Maybe you can type number seven if you can see this. Okay, that's good. So in this thing over here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cell link, maybe somewhere here. Okay, you can put anywhere you want. Incremental change, it's up to you. You can put uh, 10 months or maybe you can put uh, one, it's up to you. But in this case, I'm going to put one, all right? So if you notice over here, if just say I press the up arrow, okay? If just say I press the up arrow, it becomes one, two, three, four. So if just say I press down arrow, it becomes five, uh, it, it decreases, okay? So your up arrow means increase, down arrow means decrease, okay? So the worst case is like what I told you, it can be up to four to 12 months. But because of this pandemic, because of this COVID, we are not sure. Sometimes it can be more than 12 months. Sometimes it can be more than seven months. Okay, so I'm going to put here eight. Okay, so equal eight. So this thing over here, maybe I want to put it as white color. Okay, so that it doesn't have any distraction. Okay, so now you can change. If just say very critical, because of the Omnicron Delta, it can be worse. It can be even more than 13 months for construction. So I put here as construction period. So this is the, the best case. Best case can be four months, normal case, worst case. Okay. So assuming, assuming the construction start date is just say 1st February 2022. Okay. Assuming. So I'm just going to put this. Okay. And then con the construction in end date, I'm going to use a formula. This formula is E date. Okay, can you see this E date? Maybe you can type number eight if you can see this E date. Okay, E date is also a formula. All right. So, like what I do is just say best case. In a best case scenario, it will take four months. So, this is the start date. Months, I use four and then I minus one. Okay, why I minus one? Wait, I'll show you. So, now if you notice, if just say best case, the construction will start on 1st February and will finish on. 31st May. Okay. So why I minus one? Because if I never minus one, it will become June. Because uh, February plus four is June. So that's why over here I just minus one. Okay. It becomes 31st. All right. So I'm going to press Control R. So now we notice that if just say best case will complete by May. If just say normal, okay, there's, uh, there's uh, still there's COVID 19, but you can travel in the state. You can actually uh, travel. Of course, you need to wear masks. You need to ensure social distancing. So in this normal case, it will take about seven months. But if just say there is MCO, okay, a very critical one, 
So sometimes it can take about eight months, sometimes more than one year. Okay. All right. So this is for you to manipulate around. Okay. Next is the construction cost. Okay. Construction cost we assume it is the same. This is a total lump sum cost. Okay. It's a lump sum. It's not the monthly payment. It's not the uh, annual payment. It's just one lump sum. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it over there. Okay. So equal. And I'm going to put this engineering cost. Okay. And yeah. And then of course, I'm going to change this to F4. I just want to call, uh, connect the row. Okay. So I press F4 and uh, so you have the figures over here. And then of course I can use this. Okay. We go one by one, we go slowly so that you can get the understanding. Okay, so we have the figures over here. And there we go. Okay. All right. So this is the construction cost, the total cost. Okay. So now the, after the construction has completed, once the building has already constructed, you will face the, you will undergo the operation period or operational phase. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put equal and this 31st May, I'm going to press one. Okay, of course, I don't think there's a need of operation period. Maybe I just delete this equal to plus one. Okay, so once the construction phase has completed, the hotel will be can go under operation phase. That means the hotel can cater customers, they can conduct event and so on. All right, so I'm going to press control R. So this is how it works. So you just say a worst case scenario event is okay. So on a worst case scenario, the hotel will be operated on 1st January 2023. Okay. So there's there's a three different scenario. This is based on prediction. Okay. All right. This item I'll teach later. Okay. I want to go to the easy part first. So this one I just painted as uh, orange color. This one I'll teach you later. Okay. Now let's go to the operational phase. So during the operational phase, that's how the company can make money. That's how the company can generate revenue. Okay. So since this is a fictional case study, we just follow the items over here. So the total revenue, okay, we have the number of rooms, 90 rooms, and uh, the price per room is 199. And this is the, the calculation for room revenue. We have food and beverages revenue because you go to hotel, you can also eat, and that's how the hotel can make money. And sometimes some corporates, they can organize event or training during the inside the hotel. So that's how the company, the hotel can generate revenue. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it over here. Okay, all right. And of course I'm going to copy all the items over here. So this is, we just follow this. Okay, this is based on fictional. Sometimes you need to discuss with your team members prior to building this financial model. Okay, so this is how it works. So we have the room revenue. So during the, maybe I just put a freeze function over here so that you can see clearly. Okay. All right. So what I do is I go to view, I go to freeze, freeze pin. Okay. So this, in this scenario, we notice that. Okay. So if number and uh, if just say best case, this is the figures. And if just say normal case, this is the figures. Worst case, this is the figures. Okay. And then payroll, what I do is I'm going to copy over here. I'm just going to copy this. Okay. And then I'm going to paste it over here. Okay. Assume that during, because cost remains the same. Sometimes if you want to reduce, it's up to you. Okay. Maybe we put this, maybe the worst case, we resulted all layoff or termination to the employees. So maybe we can put here the payroll cost is perhaps we reduce to just say 25,000. Okay. We cut costs. Cleaning cost also, we can put this as 40,000. Okay, this is based on fictional data. Okay, so this is just for your understanding only. All right, so now we have already the scenario. Okay, now what we can do is we can build a, a scenario based on this element over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to data. Okay, so can you see the data ribbon over here? Maybe you can type number nine if you can see data over here. All right. So, okay, so what you do is you go to data validation. Okay, 
you go to data validation, a window will pop up. Okay, a window will pop up. In this allow function, okay, can you see this window? Maybe you can type number one if you can see this window. Okay, so in this allow function, you go to this source and you highlight this best case, worst case, normal case. You just highlight this. Okay, you highlight this and you press okay. So now we have, okay, you can choose your best case. We can choose your normal case. We can even choose here as worst case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color this to just say blue color so that you know, okay, this one is a selection. All right. But before that, let me do this some magic. Okay. What I do is I'm going to press control R. Okay. So now we have a data over here. So I'm going to put here one scenario one, scenario two, scenario three. Okay. I will tell you why I'm using this element over here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a H lookup formula. Okay, I'm going to use H lookup formula and also I'm going to use choose formula. Okay, if you want to write down, you can write down. Okay, H lookup formula. Why? Because, all right, I'm going to use H lookup. All right, the lookup value, I put it over here. Table array. Okay, can you see this table array? Maybe you can type number two if you can see table array. Okay, so the table array. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this. F for row, I'm going to put row number two. I'm going to put false. Okay. So now if just say I pick just say best case, it becomes number one. If just say it becomes normal case, it becomes number two. Okay. So why I'm going to do this? Let me explain to you why I'll do this. Okay. So now we have initial investment. So I'm going to use choose formula. Okay. So the index number, I'll put it over here, F4. And here, I'll put here, this is value one, this is value two, this is value three. And I close bracket. So of course, I need to change this. All right. So now if just say best case, it will change as well. Okay. So I'm going to put this, I'm going to paste it over here. Okay. Of course, this is not uh, accounting period, accounting not format. And I'm going to put this. Okay, just uh, bear your patience with me and I'm going to put this. Okay, and there you go. All right, so this thing over here, I'm going to change this to a date format. Okay, go to date and choose this date over here and press okay. And there you go. So now if just say I pick, if I put worst case. Okay, worst case. It becomes worse. If just say I pick normal case, it becomes normal. Okay, do you understand? So if you understand, maybe you can type yes. So how I do this? I build a drop down list first, and then I put a scenario. We cannot simply do this because we need to build a number first. So this is scenario one, scenario two, scenario three, right? So if just say worst case. So over here, this is the because this item is the scenario. This is based on the selection. You may ask me. Why, Ellen, why do we need to have a drop down list over here? Basically, to do a selection. Okay, so I'll teach you later why we are doing this. So, this is the assumption chip. Okay, this part, yes, our recording video will be provided. Yeah. Okay, so this part over here, I'll teach you later. Okay, let me tackle the easy part first. Okay, this is how you do this. All right, so this is the assumption. After the assumption is the process. Okay, some of them will say as financial statement. Some of them will stay as the report. Okay. So this is the financial statement or the workings. Okay. It's up to you. You can call it process or you can call it workings. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to put this as start date and end date. Okay. So of course, today's date is 12 December 2021. Okay. So, of course, assuming it starts at 1st January, every month will start on 1st January, okay, first the first date, okay, so 21st January 2022, equal e-date, okay, or maybe you can use EOM also can, okay, end of month, and I put the e-date, zero, there you go. So, of course, this is in a accounting, I mean, this is a number format, so I'm going to put this as date. Okay, so this is the starting date. This is the ending date. And then I give plus one, 
Okay, control R, and then I'm going to drag this. So we have up to maybe I just want to put until until yeah, maybe until 31st July 2023. Okay, so we have the starting date, we have the ending date. So I'm going to put this. Okay, maybe I put year. Okay, this is the year, this is the month. Okay. So here I do what? I push year, open bracket. Okay, year, open bracket. So this is year 2022. So I'm going to put it 2022. So it's the year 2022. And then over here I put tax. Okay, the value I'm going to put over here. And then uh, quotient M, M, M. And there you go. So now it's January. Or maybe I put extra M. January okay so I put it center all right so what I'm going to do is and there you go okay so now you can see the periods okay you can see the months and this is how it looks okay so now this is basically working for you to understand okay what is the weekly uh, what is the template and so on right okay so now it starts with the of course this is the period start the start date the end date next we go to days okay because we want to know sometimes some days will have 31 days 28 days or 30 days. So I'm going to use this equal 31 minus the start date plus one. So we have 31 days. Okay, month. I'm going to put this as equal plus one. So this is the first month. And then I'm going to put your quarter because sometimes companies, they calculate their statement by quarter basis. So I'm going to use equal round up. Okay, round up. So this is number one. So one quarter has three months, right? One quarter has three months. So I divide by three. I put here zero and close bracket. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. Okay. And control R. So this is how it looks. So this is the second month, the third month, the fourth month. So after fourth month will be the second quarter. Okay. Why second quarter? Because sometimes some companies, they record their data on quarter basis. Okay. All right. So next, this thing is this up to you. You want to construct a SOCAN or you want to delete the SOCAN. It's up to you. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a construction. I'm going to write here construction period flag. Okay. Construction period flag. All right. And then over here, I'm going to put this as operation period flag. Okay. Operation period flag. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use and formula equal A and D. Okay, can you use this? Maybe you can type if you can see this and formula over here. Okay, some of you are typing yes. Okay, so I'm going to use and formula. Okay, so this is your starting date, right? So of course, what I'll start is I'll use the starting date. Okay, I use less or equal to. Okay, less or equal to. And then what I do is, okay, maybe I lock the column number, row number three. Okay, so that because it's only locked at row number three. And then here, ensure that this one is before the, before your construction end date. Okay, construction end date. This one I press F4, comma. I go to the workings. This 31st January, okay, 31st January, I press uh, lock at row number four. I must put more than or equal to the construction start date. Okay, don't worry. So it is false. Why is false? Because our construction starts on 1st February. Okay, so if I put over here, you notice it is true. Why it's true? Because if you see this, the construction period starts on 1st February until 31st May, right? The construction period starts between 1st February. The construction phase will be between 1st February and 31st May. So that's why you see it's false and true over here. So if just say I put it over here, you see it's false. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the conditional format. Okay. Maybe I'll put it over later. So this is false. So now I'm going to use and formula again, but this time is for operation. So open bracket. Okay. So this time, what I do is this end date over here. Okay. I ensure it is more than the operation period. So the operation starts on 1st June. So I put this 
F4 close bracket. So it's false. So now I put this over here. After the operation period, after the construction period, you notice there's an operation phase. Okay. Maybe I need to color this so that you can have an understanding. So I put this as a new rule. Format only cells that contain. Okay. Can you see this? Maybe you can type number two if you can see this. Format only cells that contain. Okay. This is okay, right? Then once you go here, you go to specific text. Okay. Specific text containing. Okay. If just say it is true. Okay. I want to color it as just say yellow color. And maybe I put this yellow color. And I put font just say bold. And I put it as okay, black color. And also I press okay. So if it is true, it becomes true. And then false, I want to do the same thing. New rule format only cells that contain text containing. And then over here, maybe I put here format. This time I put red color. Okay, red color. And this one I put it as white color and bold. Okay, maybe I change to dark red. I press okay. And this one I put as false. Okay, so now if you notice, okay, maybe I just put a freeze pane over here. View, freeze, freeze. Okay. So if you notice over here, remember our assumption is that the construction starts on 1st February. But if just say worst case, worst case, it will be completed on 31st December. So when you look at the workings, you see the operation starts on January 2023. Okay, are you with me? Maybe you can type number four if you are with me. Okay, so the reason why we do a drop down list is because, okay, if just say I put your normal case. So the normal case is construction starts on 1st February, but the construction ends on 31st August and the operation starts on 1st September. So we go here, we realize that September is operation and August is when the construction ends. So how we know? Because here that's true. So during this period, it is the construction. During this period is the operation. Okay. So do you understand? So if you understand, maybe you can type yes. Okay, so basically we create a drop down list earlier so that we can manipulate the data over here. Okay, so now if just say I just say I go again, if just say I put best case, I put best case, it changes to four months. The construction is only for four months. But if just say I put worst case, okay, if you remember, the worst case can even go to 12 months, 13 months as well. So I go here and you'll notice that. That's about 13 months. Okay. Over here is the construction period. Okay. So are you with me? If you are with me, maybe you can type number five. Okay. So basically this item over here is for us to determine when is the construction period and when is the uh, operation period. So if it's construction, it is true. If it's the same operation, it is true over here. Okay. All right. So don't worry, we can go slowly. Okay, this is how it works. All right. So next item is the investment. Okay, I put here initial investment, but of course you can write the construction cost. It's up to you. You can put your construction cost. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this item over here. Okay, and I'm going to paste it over here. All right. Okay, so why we use false? Okay, I'll tell you why we use true and false. So I'm going to put here equal. Okay, there's an equal sign over here. Maybe I put here equal. And then I go to the assumption. So we have a data over here. Okay, we, this is the data. So I'm going to press F4. Okay, I'm going to divide this by 13. Construction period is 13 months. I'm going to press F4. And then I'm going to time switch the workings over here. Okay, so if you notice it is zero. Why it is zero? Because false. So when any number that multiply with false, it becomes zero. Okay, so now you just say I put control R. We have a figure over here. Okay, so of course, like what I told you earlier, this cost over here is a one lump sum. It's one total payment. It's one accumulated payment. So this payment over here will be apportioned or will be divided equally to the months. 
So if just say the months is just say best case, so we have four months. At least the day constructed for four months. So in this case, per month you pay about 650,000. Six, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to accounting format and I'm going to press Control R. Okay, so this is how it works. Okay, so now if just say I change the assumption, maybe I put this as worst case. So if worst case, it is divided to 200,000. Why is it's divided, it becomes 200,000? Because our construction is about 13 months. So divided by 13 becomes 200,000. Okay, so are you with me? Maybe you can type number six if you're with me. Okay, so if just say best case, it will divide into four months. So it becomes four months. After this, why no, no operation, no construction cost? Because after this is operational phase. So during operation, we have operation items, no construction costs. Okay, so are you with me? If you are with me, please type number seven. Okay, all right. So we can go slowly. You can also change this uh, figure over here. Maybe I put only column C. Okay, I log at column C. Okay, maybe I put here, uh, I'm going to copy this, copy this, control R. Okay, so this one, I'm going to control D. Okay, just give me a minute. All right, so this one, I'm going to press uh, locked. Okay. When you log at row number, column number F, sorry, row number F. So now we have this accordingly. All right, there you go. So this is the development cost. Okay, this apportion on the uh, construction period. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this, Control D. Okay, so if you notice, if just say I put best case or maybe worst case, so worst case, it will be apportioned according to 13 months. But if just say I put this on normal case, it will be apportioned according to seven months. Okay, seven months. All right. Okay, so now what I do is I calculate the cost. Okay, I press this. So this is the total cost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put your total equal SUM. Sorry, equal SUM, open bracket. There you go. And oh yeah. Okay. So this is how it works. All right. So I'm going to paste this. Okay. So this is your construction cost. Okay. So we are done with construction costs. So after construction is the operational operation cost. Okay. Or maybe I call it the operation items first. So in operation items, of course, we have the revenues first. Okay. So if you don't notice over here, we do have the revenue, which is the room revenue, food and beverages revenue, event management revenue. So I'm going to put this and I'm going to put it over here. Okay. So like what I told you earlier, this is one lump sum. This is based on one payment, one lump sum payment. This one is on monthly basis, okay? Maybe I put here, this one is monthly basis. This cost over here is one lump sum, okay? Divide. Okay, so this is actually based on monthly basis. So what I'm going to do is, so this seems this is a monthly basis. So I'm going to press equal, I go to the assumption, okay, I press F4. So make sure I only lock column C. Okay, I only lock column C and then I times with, I go to workings, I times with the operation period flag. Okay, and I press, I lock at column uh, row number 12. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this and over here, there you go. So of course you notice, 
after the construction period that's when the operation period starts okay after the construction period that's when the operation period starts okay let me adjust this writing all right so it becomes accounting format and there you go okay so now in this format so now if just say i go to the assumption i change to best case so like what i told you in a best case where there is no covid everyone can travel you don't have to wear masks the construction period is only four months so when the construction period is four months the operation starts on 1st june 2022 so you go over here you realize that on 1st june that's when the operation starts that's when the hotel can make money okay all right sure yes uh, i can send this uh, excel file as well okay all right so are you with me if you are with me maybe you can type number eight if you are with me okay so if you notice over here let's go back let's just see the game again so now if just say worst case a worst case scenario a worst case scenario i go to the workings you see a worst case scenario you have about 13 months 13 months of construction why 13 months because of the covid 19 because of the mco and lockdown the construction has been extended so that's why they have to wait in 2023 to generate the revenue so now if you just say i go to the assumption and if you can see the spin button over here, if just say I press the up sign, so you notice it will extend another two months. So if just say I go to the assumption, I want to decrease. So it will reduce. Okay. Can you see the magic? If you can see the magic, please type yes. Okay. So basically you can manipulate the data because we are predicting. We are assuming. We are not sure. Sometimes the, the construction period can increase. Or decrease we are not sure this is future okay if it's a historical data we have to use the exact figure but this is future we can't we are not sure when this coronavirus will decline or maybe will stop okay so this is your revenue so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this the same thing again i'm going to press this equal okay and there you go okay so this is the total cost this is the total revenue but don't forget, we also have costs. Okay, when you operate a business, there will always be a cost. So in a hotel company, there will be a payroll cost because we do have employees, we do have the staff. Okay, so this is the payroll cost. We also have cleaning costs. Okay, of course, hotel when the guests come, they need to stay. Of course, there's a cost on cleaning, cost on marketing, and food and beverages costs. Okay, so I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it over here. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. Equal, go to the assumption, payroll. What I do, I press F4. So with this is locked. So I'm going to only lock at column C times with, I go to working, I times with the operational phase. And I press F, okay, uh, I go to the, I lock on row 12. Okay, so I'm going to press HK and there you go. Okay, so if you notice, during the operational phase, there is cost. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control D. Okay. And there you go. So you notice during the operational phase, there is a cost. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press equal. So this is the cost. Okay. So now this is the items over here. All right. So this is your total cost. So I'm going to press the uh, SQM, and then bracket. So this is how it works. Okay, and then I'm going to press this total. So of course this is your total cost. So your revenue is greater than the cost. So even though during the pandemic, during the lockdown, you estimate you can actually make more money. Okay. So now you just say I change to best case. So when I change to best case, you can actually make more money okay five million of profit okay so are you with me so if you are with me maybe you can type number one okay so this is how it works all right net profit okay then you go to net profit okay so net profit is simple equal to your revenue minus cost this is your net profit okay so opening cash flow 
I put it over here, opening cash flow. And then after that, we have uh, net uh, cash inflow, cash outflow. And then we have ending cash flow. Okay, so if you remember earlier, I told you that the initial investment is 10 million, right? So we are going to put here, so the opening cash flow, we are going to put here equals to the assumption over here. I'm going to press this as F4. So this is our opening cash flow. Cash inflow is, this is the money that we get. Of course, when we handle, we build a hotel. Of course, when the customers stay, when the customer eat at the hotel or whenever there's a corporate events, so that's how you get the revenue. That's how the cash inflow. And this one is cash outflow. Okay. So in this cash outflow over here, I'm going to press, okay, uh, construction cost plus your operational cost. Okay. I'm going to put this as uh, negative. Okay. And then this is equals to opening cash flow plus cash inflow minus absolute of your cash outflow okay so this is what i'm going to do and then i'm going to go to the cash inflow okay maybe i'm go over here okay so now you see this is how it works and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to press equal okay so whatever ending cash flow for january will be your opening cash flow in february okay this is the basic accounting concept so i'm going to press control r so this is how you're going to change so this is the cash flow. So your company will have about 9 million in 2023. Okay, this is based on assumption. This is based on a fictional company. In real life, your manager will review, your senior will review, and there'll be a, some discussion with your team, with your engineering department. So basically this is based on a fictional study, but in real life, there'll be a lot of discussion. Okay, all right. So this is for your understanding only. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go this, control B, and I'm going to put border. Okay, so this is your ending cash flow. All right, so this is your assumption. You're working. Maybe I put this over here, and workings I'm going to put over here. All right, I change this color maybe to dark blue. Okay, so we have the assumption sheet. Assumption is basically for you to build data. Working is basically to do your working, so to determine which is true and false. So now if just say I go here, I go to the assumption. Okay, I go to assumption, I change to worst case. So when it's worst case, you will realize that the company can only make 5 million in 2023 during the worst case. So if you just say there's COVID, their profit is less. Okay, but if you just say best case, you will notice that they can make more than 5 million, about 9 million. Okay, are you with me? So if you are with me, maybe you can type number two. Okay, so sometimes you can also use this. Okay, this is the working. All right, so what you can do is, okay, maybe I go over here, I just change. Okay, so this is your working. Sometimes what companies do is, okay, I'm going to put it over here. I put this as report. Okay, so this will be your report. So I'm going to use the same thing. I'm going to copy this. Copy and then I'm going to paste it over here. Okay, this is your year and month. So now, what if just say we have we do this by quarter basis? Okay, that means this is first January. I'm going to put maybe about three months. So okay, maybe I put this e date. E date. So this is your starting date. Okay. Three months minus one. So third March. So of course, uh, this is based on quarter basis. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press here. Okay, so this is actually based on quarter basis. I'm going to change this. So we have a start date. We have the end date. So this is built according to quarter basis. Okay, one quarter is about three months. So we have January to January to March, April to June, July to September. Okay, I'm just teaching you because sometimes the report is a quarter basis. So this one over here, 
it is prepared according to monthly basis. So now what if they say the report is prepared according to quarterly basis? Okay, so what I'm going to do is, okay, I'm going to go to this report over here. I'm just going to copy this easier. Okay, I'm going to copy this. Okay, so this will be your report. Your report will have your income, your profit and everything. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go here. I put at quarter. Okay, so this one I put here one because this is quarter number one. Plus one, so it will be quarter number two. Over here. Okay, so this is your quarter. So we have this quarter period. All right, so of course this is your total income. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some if formula. Some if your range, okay, your range will be somewhere between quarter one until quarter two. I press F4 and then I go to the depot. I go it over here. Okay, I put this as row number four. And then your sum range will be your total revenue. And I press F4. Okay, of course, we don't have much here. But then if you see, we have the revenue, which is on a quarterly basis. Okay, so I'm going to go here. This is how it works. Of course, uh, we don't have the our period ends on July 2023. So maybe what I can do is I just remove this period. Maybe on uh, I put this on July 1st. Okay. So I'm going to change this. Okay. So for total cost, I'm going to do the same thing. Equal SUM if range. I'm going to go to the workings. I highlight the quarter. So column F until the end, column X, F4, comma. I'm going to go to the report. I'm going to press this. Okay, this F4 over here. I'm going to lock at row number four. And then I'm going to go to the total cost. Okay. And I'm going to press it over here. Okay. So this is your total cost. Okay. So your net profit will be equal minus. So this is your net profit. I use the statement over here, equal to, okay, our opening cash flow is initially, initially from this 10 million. This is our opening cash flow, okay? So net operating cash flow is actually from this item over here. Okay. So this is our net operating cash flow because it's from the operation. So this is our net operating cash flow. Okay. And then after that, okay, let me go here. And then we see, all right, this one is just a title. Okay. I put a title over here. And then this one, I do the same thing. Equal SUM open if range will be your workings over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to highlight the quarter, F4, comma, then I'm going to go to the workings again, I'm going to go to the report, I'm going to press this, I lock at row number four, comma, I'm going to do workings, now we just take the construction items. Okay, so of course you notice during the construction, during this quarter one, this cost incurred. Okay, so I'm going to press this. Okay, so this is how it works. Okay, so this is your construction cost. Your ending cash flow is 10 million plus with the net operating minus this value. Okay, and then you press control ball. And there you go. Of course, we never insert the item. I'm going to put this. And then over here. And there you go. 
Okay, so basically this is how you prepare a statement. This is the report that you will show to your manager. Okay, so basically how this works is, okay, maybe you can just draw uh, a graph. So we have a graph over here. I select the data and then I edit over here and there you go. So, so now we know what is the net profit or perhaps if just say I want to select data, okay, maybe I change this. And from here, I can actually build a data. So it's up to you. You can actually select data accordingly. Okay, you can actually show this to your manager. Okay, so this is how financial modeling works. Okay, so basically the assumption is basically for you to determine what is the scenario. And then from there, you do your workings. And then in the end, you prepare this report. Okay, you draw a diagram. You can show to your manager. Okay, so this is how it works. So basically, you just say, if just say during the case, I put just say worst case scenario. So worst case scenario, you will notice that you only will make money on the on the subsequent periods. So if just say I go, I put your format. Sorry, I click this, go to design, select data, I edit, and I put here. Okay. All right, so of course I untick the unnecessary months or maybe what I can do is I go here. Okay, so I'm going to put this as text. MMM. Okay, so we have March. And then after that, maybe I put this as equal year. Okay, so we have March 2022. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press here equal and and so over here we have the data. Okay, so what I'm going to do is all right. So I'm going to put this as center. So this thing over here, I go to design, I go to select data, edit, and I go to this item over here. All right. So now it's more presentable. Of course, you can put this as perhaps uh, equal. Okay, maybe I put this as, uh, okay, just give me a minute. So equal to net profit and, and maybe I put here. best case okay so of course what i'm going to do is if they say this one i'm going to press okay and then i'm going to put end game and then end okay so now it will look fine all right so we have the best case. So I'm going to put chart title over here, equal, there you go. Okay, so now if you just say I go to the assumption, I change to worst case. So this report will be the net profit for worst case. So in this graph, we notice that during the COVID-19, if you just say it becomes worse, so your profit will only be made in March onwards, March 2023. However, if you just say you change to best case, so you can make profit from June onwards. If just say normal case, you can make it during the September onwards. Okay, so are you with me? So if you are with me, maybe you can type number three. Okay, so basically this is, so you can actually show this to your manager. Okay, so don't worry, I will send it to you, but this is how the financial modeling works. Okay, so before I proceed to the Q&A session, okay, so what I'll show you is, I'll show you some, some rough idea, what, how this financial modeling works. Okay, so this is also another example. Okay, another example, if you remember, okay, just now I got tissue on spin button. So basically, you, we can play around these fingers over here. And now, just say this is a factory, a factory scenario whereby they have best case, worst case, and normal case. So in worst case, work from home, okay? 
in worst case work from home in best case everyone work in office okay wio means work in office wfh means work from home so best case work work in office worst case work from home so now if just say i click here okay i tick this over here covid cases are increasing i tick it over here and i go to the results you notice that the company's performance is reducing or declining okay so can you see this maybe you can type number 4 if you can see this the graph is reducing okay the graph is reducing okay but now you just say i go back okay i go back and i untick this covid assuming there's no covid everyone can travel in the state everyone can travel to even international country i mean to go to the other countries and also everyone can work in office so now you go to results you notice that the profit has been increase earning before interest and tax has been increased so can you see this maybe you can type number 5 if you see that the graph is improving maybe you can type number 5 you can see the magic all right so basically this is financial modeling financial modeling means you are using the excel you are using the microsoft excel to build data to forecast data okay to estimate data because we are not sure sometimes because of the covid the covid can increase the question is do we have vaccine so if we have vaccine i just put here so okay what if just say we have vaccine so if vaccine okay then you notice that the results is like this but what if just say there is no vaccine so if no vaccine you go here you notice that reducing okay so this is basically financial model there's also another example that i can show you okay this is also another example okay can you see this excel file over here economic analysis maybe you can type number 6 if you can see this okay so this is another version of financial model okay maybe you can type number 6 if you can see this excel file okay so of course we can actually choose sensitivity case or downside case so downside case you notice the cash flow is down but if just say we choose maybe upside or base case the graph is improving okay so we can actually change this to maybe stress case okay you see it's decreasing so if just say base case it is improving okay so this is basically financial model okay all right so next i think i'll pass to the mc maybe for the qna session all right so i guess if you have any questions maybe you can type in the chat box or perhaps you can uh, unmute and uh, inquire if you have any concern or queries
All right. So uh, there's a question. Uh, I want to ask. Usually, the tool used for financial modeling is Microsoft Excel. Ah, uh, yes. Sometimes they use Microsoft Excel because Microsoft Excel is where you can um, amend the input. Okay. Maybe I can type here because the flow of financial modeling is very simple. Input, process, output. Okay. This is the process. So basically, they use the Excel. Why? Because to amend the input. Okay, if you, if you remember just now, okay, just now I taught you on the assumption part. Okay, so on the assumption part, we amend data. We choose base case, we choose normal case, we choose worst case. So we build data on the assumption part. Okay, assumption, which is the input part. So we can use in Microsoft Excel, but sometimes you can use Power BI for analysis. Power BI or Power Query or even Power Pivot to make further analysis for further analysis. Okay, so did I answer your question? If I answer your question, maybe you can type yes. Okay, there's another question. Okay, for it depends on the industry, on the food delivery. Okay, so a different layout. If just say oil and gas, it's different. For food and del food uh, delivery companies, so it's different. So basically, my suggestion is if you have a strong understanding on how the industry works, so and that's when you can manipulate the data. You can actually uh, amend the forecast. Okay, so I'm not well versed in food delivery. But if you study the food delivery, if you know how the how they generate revenue and what's the cost incurred, so if just say if you you are telling that the profit earned based on the commission charge, then you can also include the item of commission, and then from there you can multiply the, uh, what I call it. Maybe if I can share the screen, okay, so that you can see clearly. Okay, so can you see the screen? Maybe you can just uh, type yes if you can see the screen. Okay, so if you just see a food delivery company, seems that if the profit is actually based on the cons uh, the commission, so what you can do is maybe you can insert an item over here, commission. Okay, so commission, and then what you can do is, okay, so you just say put here two hundred, and then you put here times with just say it depends on the percentage. Okay, so if you're not sure with the percentage, you can just put a number over here. Okay, so what I do is I go to this number. Okay, I go to developer tab, insert, put a spin button. I click over here, right click, format control. I go over here and I put this or maybe somewhere here. Okay, and this one maybe I increase by 100 maybe. Okay, so what I do is I just, so now it increased by 100. Okay, or even I can change by 50 as well. So I change this by 50. Okay, so I can put this like this. So what I'm doing is I just divide by 1000. Okay, so I'm going to press this. So now you can know what is your profit mean based on the commission. Okay, so you just say I do one by 50, maybe I write it. I put just say 500. So now you know. Okay, so did I answer your question? Maybe you can just type yes if I answer your question. So you can actually build the data just like this. But of course, this is not so nice. But uh, you can actually build the data, the profit, the revenue, the cost. And then from there, you can calculate the profit. Okay, so did I answer your question? So you have any other questions, maybe you can ask.
Okay, uh, there's two questions. Uh, right. uh, just give me a minute. I have a question for those who are not experienced in Excel. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, of formulas, but uh, this video will be presented in YouTube. Okay, so you can actually learn this. You can actually uh, recover this. So the formulas like N formula, E date formula, maybe I put here, I write here. N formula, E date formula, EOM formula, EO month, and then N for formula as well. Sum if, okay, H lookup, and choose. Okay, this is the formulas that I choose, I perform earlier. You can actually learn this, that's a lot. Okay, but no worries, this video is recorded, so you can get a recorded version later, or perhaps you can watch in YouTube, since this will be published in YouTube. So now I have, uh, so did I answer your question, Ashwinder? And now another question, okay. If the commission is fixed, but there, there are many types of food. Of course, uh, if you have a list of foods, maybe just say nasi goreng or anything. So of course, food works by price times quantity. So the price, the food price is based on the food. You may correct me if I'm wrong. And then, you have the quantity, which is not sure. So you can use the, the developer tab spin button. And then from there you can multiply. Okay. So if just say, I show you an example over here. Okay. So if just say we have, just say, can you see the screen? Maybe you can just type yes or anything. If you can see the screen. Okay. So over here, if just say you have the food, maybe nasi goreng. Or maybe I put here nasi lemak. Okay, this is an example, example over here. So I you can correct me if I'm wrong. Sometimes the food is fixed based on the based on the particular food. So maybe I put here five ringgit and here maybe two ringgit. Okay. So then of course this is based on quantity, right? So this is the price, this is the quantity. And then over here, you can manipulate over here. Okay, you can put this as 20 or maybe as 30, and then from there you can calculate. Okay, did I answer your question? So of course you need to, it depends on how you structure it. So maybe you can put your price item, the list of food, maybe the list of food in one sheet, then I put your nasi goreng. And then you have your nasi goreng, ayam, and nasi lemak. So this is one particular item where you put the menu. Okay, this one is menu. Okay. So now if just say you have a particular order, of course, what I can do, what I suggest is, so since you have this item over here, and then maybe you can put the price. Okay, nasi goreng is five, ayam I put seven, and this one I put as two. So you can put the menu over here, and then from there you can put your input sheet. Okay, did I answer your question? Okay, so you have any questions, maybe you can uh, just type, uh, you can ask, type in the chat box and ask. So no worries, this, uh, this video will be recorded and will be shared to you. And also it will be posted in the, in the YouTube channel. So no worries.